Hello, everybody. Welcome to Bathman's Lounge. I'm your host, the incomparable NSS, and this is my co-host, my little girl, my loving Pitbull Aspen. I've got a little thing on here because she's an old dog and she's starting to get a leaky coozer. So I've got this little uh, protection here to keep her if she dribbles. But what can you do? Let me quickly wet my whistle here. And today I'm gonna I'm gonna start another, add another little side subgroup of series in this massive umbrella of Baffman's Lounge. You know, I have my stuff on the logical fallacies. I've got one and done. <clears throat> I'm gonna call this gone but not forgotten. And the inaugural, the inaugural um, let's see. Uh, episode I am going to do on a band called Tribe. <clears throat> I think I'll start with my notes that I wrote on April 18th, 1992, at a place called the Scrapyard in Buffalo, New York. And I'll just read my notes that I put when I saw this show. So the only reason I walked into the Long Gone Scrap Air in Buffalo, New York on Saturday, April 18th, 1992, was because its owner, Jor Cohn, owed me money for a recent gig. After suffering through some lame old punk act, the relatively unknown tribe mounted the stage. <clears throat> there I stood, front row, dead center. For the show, my gaze almost entirely transfixed on Miss Janet LaVallee. I purchased a board the very next day and listened to it for a week straight. I joined the fan club, have an autographed 8x10 in a scrapbook somewhere, as well as my lucky tribe t-shirt that I brought out of storage for this episode, this episode only, uh, and which I was wearing when I took an ID photo for my Citibank Visa card and have never allowed them to change it, even though I'm 12 years older now and now have short hair. And um, I don't have that city card anymore. So, um, the band Tribe put out only two albums. Uh, the first was called Abort in 1991. And it is a masterpiece. An absolute, utter masterpiece. And I just heard it today so I could just get acclimated one more time for this for this episode here. And I'm going to go through this. <clears throat> uh, let me go through the album. It starts out with, uh, uh, well, the, the members are, there, there are five pieces. Janet LaValle, who was the vocals. I guess she played some rhythm guitar. And the, the other female in the band was a young lady by the name of Terry Bar uh, Barros, who played all keyboards and black backing vocals. And she, I think she sang lead on one or two of the songs. Uh, Eric Brosis was the lead guitar and uh, backing vocals. Then Greg LaPiccolo was the bass player uh, and backing vocals. And then finally Dave Penzo on uh, drums and percussion. So, album starts out with a song called Here at the Home. And it is a vocal sonic masterpiece. And it is, in my opinion, the perfect album starter. Just bah! And... Wow, it's just like, whoa, here we are. This is what we're going to do. Sit down and listen. Going into a song called Easter Dinner, all right, um, <clears throat> by uh, Greg LaPiccolo. And I'm a huge fan of LaPiccolo's writing. Um, and I'll talk about that in a bit. Um, the One into the other, and it just, the groove hits instantly when you when you walk in, in the door with this song. Followed by the title track, Abort, which... I'm not super crazy about, but I don't hate. Uh, then a beautiful track called Rescue Me. Uh, and then finally, uh, or next, uh, is a song called Joyride. I saw the film. This was the single that they released off this album. You could find the video. Um, and again, it's a Greg LaPiccolo track. And I just love his writing. Um, and this is just a wonderful track where, where Janet LaValle sings, uh, especially in the second verse. She, she just you know, boom, comes out and really grooves with it, um, where the first verse she sort of lays back. And this is, it seems to be like a trademark in the Greg LaPiccolo stuff, where he likes to have a male voice sing some sort of a chant or what have you. Um, 
<clears throat> Joyride, uh, great. The next song is a song called Payphone, which is beautiful. Um, it was written by um, uh, Terry and Eric, who uh, later on uh, actually got married in, around the second album and are hopefully still married today. Um, Daddy's Home, which is a, by Eric, um, a really dark song, fantastic, fantastic uh, piece. Um, Jackpot by Greg LaPiccolo, uh, which is excellent. Serenade, Outstanding, and uh, by by uh, Baros, the if I'm saying your name wrong, I humbly apologize. Eric, the uh, guitar player, uh, and followed by Tide uh, by Eric, and then we have, in my opinion, the one thing that makes this song or this album flawed. Song eleven is the second last song on the album. It's called Outside, and it's by Greg LaPiccolo, and it is stellar from the opening guitar arpeggiated delayed groove to the fact that that the song starts one way with a haunting vibe with Janet LaValle singing and then goes into like an upscale exciting major key grooving and then there's this sort of male vocal female vocal call and answer female male vocal and she goes and here I am and the guys are going and I'm on my own turning around and just like Wow, you know, and then it goes into a song called Vigil, which is the last song on the album. And if I had my way, had I been there at the time, I would have fought violently to reverse the order. Um, Vigil, when you get to the last song, after you've just been exhausted by outside and its beauty, um, it's almost like, oh, there's one more song. I wanted it to end now. Uh, they should have got, played out, uh, Vigil first and then ended with, with Outside. And that album is solid, utter perfection outside of that. Um, they released another album in 93 called Sleeper. And um, I was less than impressed with it. Um, I... Yeah, I did not care for Miracle Assault isn't too bad. Red Rover I wasn't a fan of. Crawl's okay. Uh, the only tracks I liked on there were the Greg LaPiccolo tracks. Super Collider, track four. Um, and uh, there was another one on there. Is it uh, Smile? Yeah, it was not that good of an album. And in the middle, I think just around the time the album released, uh, even though Dave Penzo played drums on it, he had left or was forced out or whatever. I'm not sure the whole story, um, but they did replace him. And they did go on uh, Conan O'Brien. There's a video of them, and they did, I believe they did Super Collider on that. Um, and uh, then there, I like I said, I joined the, the fan club, um, and... Then I received a letter announcing, and I'll just read from my notes here, announcing their final show in Boston. And I toyed with the idea of going up there. And I've got several regrets in life, all of which are music, and this is one of them. But I had a, a uh, I even list on here, yes, uh, missing the Monsters of Rock and missing um, In Excess in Toronto and uh, missing... This show is one of the, uh, because in the Excess show, that was the last time that Michael Hutchins played played with them alive. Um, and I did not go to see them for their final show. And that is the only time I ever saw them in Buffalo. Um, I, like I say, was floored. If anyone knows the set list that they played in Buffalo or the set list they played on that abort tour. I would love to know it. If you can, if you can let me know, that would be great. If anyone has any bootlegs of them at that tour, I would be honored to clean them up and remaster them if I could for you. <clears throat> um, I would love, love to hear them. Um, I, I, I remember a few things. I think, I think they opened up with Vigil because I remember Dave Penzo just sort of coming on and started playing this beat and then the band sort of joined him and I remember I don't know if it was an encore or something like that but the ladies left the stage 
and the guy said, ah, oh, now we'll get rid of the women folk and we'll play something. And they just like cranked out a, a heavier song, which I think I found from a group or whatever was uh, a song by a, 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 a no longer punk band from Boston. They were from the Boston area. And then the um, ladies joined them on the stage. And I remember Terry goes, um, oh, our boys, some sort of cute little <clears throat> thing about, you know, whatever them. And uh, then they played maybe one song or maybe another, uh, two songs more and, and the show was done. But I just remember being absolutely smitten with the band, um, just blown away by their songwriting. With regards to Abort, you can't find it. I, I went on eBay and I found it. There are a couple of copies you could probably grab reasonably priced on CD. Um, it is not available on Spotify or anywhere. You could probably Google um, uh, uh, YouTube, whatever we're on right now, um, <clears throat> and see it and, and find snippets of it. And there are videos of them. Um, but if you get a chance, listen to Abort. And if... If, if if the opportunity presented itself for me to get my hands on the original masters and, you know, I would cost a lot of money, which at this juncture I don't have, but maybe I could work out with somebody, uh, I would love to re-release that album, remastered with liner notes. Um, I was listening to it today, and this, it's sonically really good. It was mastered by, mastered by Bob Ludwig, who is, you know, the golden ears, um, but... I think that mastering techniques in 1991 versus mastering techniques in 2022 are much different. And I think that it might benefit from a, a remaster. I wouldn't necessarily remix it because it's perfect. Um, I would remix it. I would like to take a stab at remixing it only because there's a couple of things that I would want to change. <clears throat> Primarily the drums and that drum sound, which was maybe probably happening around that time in the early 90s. But I don't, I think it detracts from the overall sonic picture. And then maybe I would, in the mix, would work a little bit more because there's they're so dense. If the opportunity to remix it, would be to then allow using some of the modern technology to clean up a little bit spaces where there's a lot of really good guitar and keyboard, uh, just s sound spaces and sonic spaces that um, I think it would be, it would be, it would help to maybe some of the modern technology to carve out a little more areas that you could kind of pack in things better than you could back in 91. But that would be the only thing, that would be the only reason. It doesn't detract from the current mix. Um, uh, and I, I think a good, a, a, a more modern remaster, just to just to clean it up just a little bit more. Though, if you, I, I still think it's a great, perfect sounding album. So I, I don't, um, it's not one of those where it's like a, a demo tape that you, that you trying to resurrect, okay? Um, it would just only be able to make it that more perfect, for lack of a better statement, I guess. Um, whatever happened to Tribe? I've done some research. There was a guy called Steve Young, I believe, uh, had opened a website dedicated to them. And then um, there are a couple of other things. Come on, get out of here, you prick. Yeah, I think Steve Young opened up something about uh, a website. Um, or Steve, Steve, bless your heart, Steve. I think it was Steve Young, but maybe I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Um, and there is a, a, a Facebook group <clears throat> dedicated to them. So I found out that by interesting that, yes, guitar player Eric and keyboard player Terry did get married, had some children. Um, but they, along with bass player Greg LaPiccolo, were heavily involved in the video game industry. And uh, Terry is the voice of several characters in a couple of the video game um, genre, whatever, whatever series that is in there. Um, and I believe they've written a lot of music for it and, and other things. And I heard, though it hasn't been confirmed, I heard that um, 
they were instrumental in the Guitar Hero program or the company they worked for. Um, uh, you feel free to confirm that in the notes in the comments below. Any or all information you could give me about this band, I'd greatly appreciate it. And if there is a potential, if, 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 if anything that this video does, if there could be a groundswell started, if I could get more fans into this uh, band and into this album to get the opportunity to get it released so that the world can hear this band, I would feel I have done my part. Um, so Gone But Not Forgotten, the band Tribe, and their two albums, Abort being a sheer masterpiece, and um, the second one, uh, Sleeper, being acceptable, but just no abort. So, thank you once again for always checking out my uh, videos. And I do have merchandise. I have pint glasses, Baphomet's Lounge pint glasses, Baphomet's Lounge koozies, ooh, and Baphomet's Lounge coasters for sale in the links down below. And if you like what you see, you can like and subscribe and all that yada yada. Leave comments, share with your friends. I would greatly appreciate it if you turned your friends on to Baphomet's Lounge and Tribe. So, until the next time, everybody, as my pit bull just snores away. Cheers, everyone. I'll talk to you soon. Peace.